I just need my little like handheld fan right now because it's hot as fuck in this room when usually it's really cold. Today's case is the definition of weird. It remains unsolved and the family need answers and unsolved cases both fascinate and infuriate me. Hey, it's Mel, hope you're doing well and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, it's lovely to have you here. Today, we're gonna to be looking at the case of Henry McGabe. It occurred in 2015 in Minnesota. There's a lot to cover, so let's get into it. 31-year-old Henry McGabe was born on the 16th of September, 1984. He was a father of two and had a wife called Corrine. He was a very likeable person and he worked as an auditor for the state of Minnesota. At the time, he was living with his family in Moundsview. He was a hard-working man who immigrated from Liberia. I don't know if this is true or not, but apparently, at the time of Henry's disappearance, he was going through a divorce. His wife suspected that he was cheating on her. Henry was a good public speaker who enjoyed football. Henry had short black hair, he was slim build, he had brown eyes. He was 5 foot 11 and weighed around 168 pounds. On the night of the 6th of September 2015, Henry, along with two friends, went to a club called Povlipski's on 65. That club is now closed. One of Henry's friends was called William Kennedy, nicknamed Pappas, and he is a huge part to this case, so remember his name because it comes into play later. He was very suspicious throughout this entire case. That night, the three men partied and drank. Allegedly, at one point during the night, Henry had actually given his wallet to one of his friends for safekeeping so that he wouldn't buy any more drinks because he was already quite drunk. William then took Henry's house keys. The three men left the club at 2am. William claims that he then dropped Henry off near a Super America gas station in Fridley on 73rd Avenue. Again, that's very odd. It's also unclear why William chose to just drop Henry off by himself at a gas station instead of just driving him home. Henry vanished over the Labor Day weekend. His wife at the time was in California. At 2.28am on the 7th of September, Corrine got a weird voicemail from Henry's phone. This voicemail is creepy as shit. In the voicemail, she heard a jumble of noises for seven minutes, along with sounds of pain, moaning and groaning, likely to be Gabe. At the end of the voicemail, someone says, stop it. It's clear that Henry was struggling with someone. Some sources claim that gunshots were heard in the voicemail, along with Henry saying he was shot. To my knowledge, the full recording of the voicemail has not been made public. Bits and pieces have been made public, but not in its entirety. The next morning, Henry didn't show up for work, and that was not like him. His wife and brother then filed a missing persons report. The police took this case very seriously, and an investigation soon occurred. The police later revealed that Henry had sent another voicemail to his brother that night. The voicemail was very similar to the original one that was sent to Corrine. The same strange noises were heard with a bunch of rumbling. Corrine received the first strange voicemail and then another one was sent to his brother. It should be noted here that some sources say Kareen uh, phoned Henry's brother after getting the weird voicemail and she played a recording of it for him. An investigation quickly began. Initially, Corrine thought Henry had been cheating on her and he'd ran off and he'd been hiding somewhere on the East Coast. The men who last saw Henry were interviewed. William denied any involvement in Henry's disappearance. Henry's bank account was untouched and his phone was never turned back on. After the early morning of 7th of September, the police decided it was very unlikely that Henry had run off. During the investigation, it was discovered that Henry was actually dropped off at the Holiday gas station and not the Super America gas station. It's unclear if William got confused or simply lied about this. Surveillance video of that night was turned into the police. One friend still had uh, Henry's wallet and William still had Henry's house keys, which is weird. Why do you still have those things in your possession when an investigation is going on? I don't know. Make it make sense. Like I said before, um, William is a very 
strange individual, very bloody suspicious. This meant that Henry couldn't get an Uber home and he couldn't get into his house without his house keys. Where was he meant to go? This whole thing is very bloody suspicious and I feel like the police should have investigated William more, but they just didn't. During that night of Henry's disappearance, his phone was able to ping off of nearby towers. The pings were traced to a cell tower near Creekview Park in New Brighton. Police and volunteers searched the area near the cell towers. But sadly, nothing was ever found and the FBI soon got involved. On the 2nd of November, Henry's badly decomposing body was found by a kayaker on Rush Lake. This area was six miles away from where Henry had allegedly been dropped off by William. It took seven days for his body to be positively identified. Due to decomposition, the autopsy was very difficult to perform. His death was ruled as drowning. Despite reports of people hearing gunshots in the voicemail, there was no gunshot wound on Henry's body and no gun was ever found. Also, there were no stab wounds, injuries or signs of trauma on his body. That to me is so bloody bizarre because in the voicemail you can clearly hear him struggling with someone. At the time, the police had a theory that while Henry was drunk and sort of wandering around, he fell into the lake and drowned. They thought it was a simple accident. Many others, including me, think foul play was involved. There are a lot of theories in this case. I'm only going to be looking at a few of the more rational ones. The first and most popular theory is that Henry was killed. Like I previously mentioned, on the voicemail you can hear Henry struggling with someone who says stop it. His family also believe he was murdered. A lot of people believe that William killed Henry because of how suspicious he was during the whole investigation. I'm not sure how close like William and Henry's relationship was, whether they were long-term friends or short-term friends. He denied any involvement in Henry's disappearance and he was not very cooperative with the police. Aside from William, Henry's other friend needs to be looked into as well. However, William seems to have no motive. Biggest question is, why didn't William just drive Henry home? Like, why just abandon him? It's possible Henry was beaten unconscious and then thrown into the lake. The police have also suspected that Henry was drugged at the party by someone, and that's why he kind of wandered off into the woods initially. Others think that Henry was the victim of a Liberian ritual, though there's not much evidence to support this. I find it very unlikely. Another unlikely theory to me is that Henry's wife, Kareen, was involved. At the time of Henry's disappearance, she was in California. The last theory is accidental drowning, like the police say. They believed he fell into the lake while wandering about. Again, I find this very unlikely. But bear in mind it would have been around a six or seven mile walk from the gas station where he was dropped off by William. That's a long walk. In the middle of the night, it's 2am, Henry can't see a thing. He's drunk, probably stumbling about. Like, I just find the whole theory very unlikely. Sadly, there are no new updates on the case and his family deserve answers. They deserve justice. They do believe to this day that Henry was murdered, as do I. Someone out there knows something, like someone needs to come forward with information. There's currently a £5,000 reward for information leading to an arrest or conviction in the case. As usual, I'm going to leave contact information down below. That is all for today. That was the case of Henry McGabe. As always, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye. Mm -hmm.